Many thanks for joining me this morning on Off the Press, the program where we tell you all that happens on the national dailies and make sense of it. And with me this morning to dissect the national dailies is Ifi Oji, a legal practitioner. Good morning, Ifi, for being with me this morning. Good morning, Amaka. Always nice to meet you. Same here. Same here. Great to have you this morning. So we'll begin with the Vanguard newspaper. It's up for review. And from the front page, it says... Mixed reactions greet CBN's order to charge fees on deposits. Uh, you will find that on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. And opera over 5.5 billion naira for our cars insulting. The Senate leader is saying that criticism of 5.5 billion vehicle purchase nonsensical, insulting and mischievous. Says money for cars part of NAS uh, 125 billion naira 2019 budget. You'll find that story is now displayed on your screen on page 2 of the Vanguard newspaper. Now, another batch of 350 Nigerians are home from South Africa. Uh, you see that picture story there. And we see xenophobic attacks. Reps want national honors for Air Peace MD, Onyema. You find that on page 8 of the Vanguard newspaper. Afeni Fere, YCE, others react to Oshibanjo's ordeal on page 17. Defamation. Lee's and Jorin petitions NDLEA vows to get justice against Toyin Abraham. Please find out what this is about on e daily. There you can see it display, uh, displayed on the front page of page four. We are democratizing poverty instead of hope. Fire me tells elite on page nine. Youths protest against Bobriski on page six. Police lay siege to CDHR premises, venue of pro Soware, Showare rather protest on page ten. Lack of funds, key challenge to load, road construction. Fashola says this and find out why he says so on page 14. Uh, so this morning, if he, uh, what do we begin with? The xenophobic attack, there is the misreaction, uh, the new order from the CBN. Uh, so let's, let's look at the CBN policy for a, a minute there. I mean, I've spoken about this before, mm -hmm. and I just think that... Um, this policy is one of the many long list of policies, a laundry list of policies that they have been rolling out in recent times to try and rev up our uh, revenue in Nigeria mm -hmm. and to try and basically make sure that, um, that we don't find ourselves in a position where we can't pay uh, the cash calls for the um, payments of, um, uh, all, uh, of, of staff that are being owed salaries mm -hmm. and uh, also the minimum wage earners of this country. Uh, I mean, I don't understand why they are not taking into account the small businesses and the cash-driven businesses. Mm -hmm. I know we go to the market and we know that a lot of a lot of cash comes in and goes out of these businesses on a daily basis. On a daily basis, basis yeah. exactly, and um, they're not able to meet those demands if they have to make those payments, mm. uh, make those bulk payments into uh, deposits into the banks. Mm. And I mean, another thing you can also look at is also. Um, you can also look at many other uh, disadvantages or many other setbacks of having to make uh, interest rates on these deposits. You don't encourage people to save because once they get the money, they're wondering, oh, do I keep hold on to the money or mm. do I or deposit it in the bank? And then I'll account? be charged? Yes, exactly. So you're not encouraging, it's not very encouraging for to, uh, saving culture in, amongst Nigerians. Yes, they want to probably try and uh, incentivize uh, bank, ho bank owners or bank holders to, account holders to, to make sure that the, um, to make sure that the bank um, holders are, um, Doing, Possible. doing, yeah, doing cashless transactions. But ultimately, if they're not, if the if, if it's not their choice to do cashless transactions, they are put in a tight position and they, they tend to hold on to the money instead. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are maybe two of the reasons why you know I would mm -hmm. not, I don't think it's necessarily the best uh, decision at this time. Yeah, yes, exactly. Okay, so um, there's something that's caught my attention here. It's um, that. Um, Reps want national honors for Air Peace MD Onyema. What are your thoughts? This brought a little smile to my face right. when I read it. I mm. know the story was is is really really detailed in mm. terms of how he, they bring him to the chamber of the National Assembly, and it just it's almost like a rallying call for us Nigerians to basically just sometimes be our brother's keeper, mm. especially in, in areas where you can help. And I mean, he was very touching what he said about it being the greatest honor he'd ever received. And also he made it seem as if, uh, he, he just he exemplifies what we would expect from business owners and in, in our society and what they should always 
uh, strive to be in terms of give, um, giving back to the society. Mm -hmm. If you saw the clip of that day uh, when they returned the first batch, he was so emotional, almost close to tears, you know, as he welcomed them and they sang the national anthem. And I, I agree that this uh, should be done. And many thanks to him also for that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, some more Nigerians are back, another 350 Nigerians are back home from South Africa. And the government says uh, they are giving them some palliatives. In your opinion, do you think that is really enough? Because they are giving them 20,000 Naira, uh, you know, airtime also. Is that enough? Yeah, they, I hear that they also wanted to um, give them some form of training. Entrepreneurial yeah, uh, skill exactly. training. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking to myself, these are people that have left your country because you have failed them in the first instance. Mm. What makes you think that 20,000 airtime is going to be enough or suffice for them to kickstart their lives, especially mm. as it's been a total upheaval for them in the last couple of months? But I mean, I guess, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a start, but you really need to sort of key in on why people are living in the first place. Why, why are your citizens living in the first place? And that will give, inform your decision next, you know, moving forward on maybe giving people that are in Nigeria these skills before, so that they won't even have to leave in the first place. Mm -hmm. I so. mean, this, what you've said, so many analysts that have come on this show have also raised the same mm -hmm. concern to say, if we put our house in mm -hmm. order, so mm -hmm. to speak, people will not have reasons. Of course, people would move, but if we make the pastures here greener, mm -hmm. would, chances are that, yeah, I mean, just look at, look at, I mean, I always, you know, I always like to use uh, examples of from far afield as possible. Mm -hmm. Look at the, uh, I don't know if you were able to uh, witness the town hall meeting that Elizabeth Warren had mm -hmm. and how she made uh, one of her biggest uh, policy uh, mandates or what she has put, you know, as one of the things, first thing she would do if she was elected as a president of America mm -hmm. was that she would basically make sure that the Second, so your first million, first 50 million as a millionaire in America is free of tax. Mm -hmm. But then the next million after, no, it's not free of tax, but it's free mm -hmm. of a special tax. So the next 50 million after that, for every dollar you make, you have to pay two cents for every, for every tax. And then she was able to summarize that with the money that is amassed from uh, yes. collecting that particular tax, that student loans will be uh, more or less forgiven, mm -hmm. that there would be a, health, a robust healthcare system in America. And she had so many different welfare package plans. And I don't understand why we can't adopt something similar, obviously localized to tailor, tailor to our, our own needs. needs. Mm -hmm. But I think that the fact that uh, someone like Chief Oyema put himself out there, he understands that he has received so much and been given so much mm. by Nigeria and in he and he understands that there at some level there has to be a give back you know so I think if we're able to do this for other uh, other big maybe bigger even bigger and millionaires or billionaires mm -hmm. for that example that we have in the yeah that we have we have a lot of we have the, 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 the richest man in Africa is Nigerian. I, I wouldn't know. I don't know his name. You don't know his name either. <laughs> but the point I'm making, and not to target any particular mm -hmm. um, state, or any any particular uh, entrepreneur, but just to make them aware that even at that level, there's a civic duty to look after people that, right, that live next door to you. Mm, to look after people. Thank you. Yeah. So many good thoughts there. And so we'll move on now to the Punch newspaper, and it says, CBN puts currency in circulation at 2.2 trillion naira. You find that on page 25. Experts, OPS, uh, pick holes in CBN's cashless policy, says charges increase burden on banks and customers. Just exactly what you finished saying mm -hmm. now. On page 26, you find that evacuation reps ask Buhari to honor Air Peace boss. I lived on streets for months, came back empty. Returnee is saying so on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. Now, Buhari replaces embattled Oyoita, XHOC faces e EFCC. You find that on page 19, uh, thankfully already displayed there on your screens, governors demand audits of six, uh, 614 billion naira bailout funds. That's on page 41. And Cabal targets Oshibajo over actions taken as AG president, acting president. That's on page two. We recall when he was acting president. And Dauros removal, XCGN Onogen cited as examples. Now, there's a picture story here also of um, Free Them Now. Free Them All Now. That's uh, Omo Yele Showere is there, Agba Jalingo, and Olawale Adebayo. 
Um, so these are protesters calling for the unconditional release of Revolution Now convener Shoare and other persons detained by the federal government in Ikeja. Uh, that's uh, Lagos. That's yesterday. Now police barricade Sahara reporters, CDHR offices and stop protests. You find that on page 13 and then court hears Obasanjo's son's divorce suit in October. October the 2nd, that will happen. On page 40, cleric tackles Oshun on alleged church tax plan. Find that on page 12. And Jigawa, 123, withdraws 1 billion naira suit against uh, Lagos. That's on page 40. And public outcry over 5.5 billion naira SUVs and insult. Senate says that on page 19. Mm -hmm. Head of Ekitivacity. Student stabs boyfriend to death. Oh, okay. This story has been ongoing. We saw it from yesterday. Well, if you're still interested, you find that on page four. And then um, Adeboroa, Apata, and others get senior advocates of Nigerian rank on the September September 23rd. You find that story on page 40 of the Punch newspaper. Now, let's talk about this um, protest. Yesterday, they sealed off. Um, well, we had in the news that there were some policemen who had gone to Sahara reporters and they sealed off the place because it was supposed to be a protest. Now, Nigerians are also agitated and calling that these people should be free now. Um, Oshoware and the rest of you know those guys that were detained by the DSS after the protest of mm -hmm. August the 5th. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts really generally on this as a democratic nation? I think uh, I, I have very general thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to delve too deep into this. But I, what I would, would say is that every democracy is built on the fabric of free press. Mm. And you cannot um, penalize anyone from their democratic rights yeah. you know because they do not agree with your own thoughts that's yeah. the whole point of being a human being it's a basic human right to have free thoughts free press and free agency yeah. so if you're being uh if you're being penalized or you're being uh you're being uh, basically dominated for lack of a better word over what your beliefs are, then there should be, a, we should have to rethink our, uh, our whole uh, thoughts on democracy in the first place. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. the human rights uh, lawyer that's representing him, that's uh, Femi Palano, yesterday also released a statement to say, no, I mean, that's uncalled for mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be done. And But I hope, we do hope that um, there'll be a follow up on that and that we'll see something positive coming out from that story. So we'll move on now to the Nation newspaper. Uh, and the first story there is Senate defense 5.5 billion official vehicles. Uh, they say criticism is insulting. Please find that on page 43 mm -hmm. of the Nation newspaper. And Obasanjo's son yet to serve diverse paper. Court adjourns the case. It's on page 6. 2023, Ngege and Sagei disagree on zoning. Negotiation is key. They say, find out uh, what this is about on page seven, already displayed there on your screen. And inside, youths kick against Bobriski. Uh, find out why the youths are, are protesting or kicking against uh, the cross dresser, Bobriski, as he prefers to call himself. And then, 71 uh, miscreants arrested in Oshodi. That's on page six of the Nation newspaper. And the big story there says 9.6 billion judgment. House summons Malami and Silver. Ministers to face seven, 17-man panel. It exposes a deep decay in our governance. I mean, when you look at that, you just have to just laugh a little. Because mm. at the end of the day, this is basically the medicine after death. Mm -hmm. In uh, medical terms, they would call it a post-mortem. Mm. So at, the, at that point, you're trying to resuscitate someone that's dead on arrival. This, the judgment has already been handed over. It's a question of whether or not we're able to overturn the judgment, mm -hmm. or able to set aside the judgment debt. Mm -hmm. So we'll have um, some conversation and negotiation along exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, uh, even. I think we've spoken about this as well before. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was there were so many opportunities for them to negotiate those sums to be lower. Mm -hmm. However, they didn't take up any of those opportunities, and it, you know, it was clear that they were not diligent mm -hmm. enough in terms of their day handling of this particular matter. Yes, they, it's not an excuse that certain. Um, Members of government were not on, uh, were not, 
within within the, those positions at that time, we were vacant positions. But that is still not a good enough reason. And maybe they didn't think that they were going to have as severe a judgment as they did. Mm. And even at the point where they realized it was just as severe as they may have, they didn't anticipate. They had tried to do you know horrid negotiation, but at that point, P and ID were very firm in their position. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is we, all we can say is that we just hope we wish the best for Nigeria because mm. this is a whole. Um, That's a lot of money. It's we're a lot of money. About, it's a lot of and money. And the, the effect is going again to trickle down on the common person, exactly. so to speak. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so moving on, we see picture stories now. Some of the returnees from last night, um, children, women, and men, and then some of the returnees undergoing uh, profile. Uh, so 315 Nigerians returned from South Africa. Again, courtesy Epis, MD, and uh, um, the, the, some collaboration, some level of collaboration with the uh, federal government. So that's on page eight, please find out what the story is. Yemi Esson replaces Oyoita as the acting HOCSF. So please find out what this is about. On It's on the front page there, as you can see, but you continued on uh, page eight. Adoke has case to answer on Malabo oil block scandal, says EFCC. That's on page 8 also. So grab a copy of um, the Nation newspaper and find out what it is all of these uh, stories are about. And then we have behind uh, the Nation newspaper, there's a column there, Reality Bites by Olatunji Ololadi. And it says, Power Bates and the Critic. Please find out what this is about. Hardball, BOS, Conk Environmental Outlaws. Uh, grab a copy of the Nation newspaper for yourself today and know what this is about. And very quickly, we move now to this day newspaper. Again, uh, Ife, what is here is the P and ID story. Integrity of UK Home Secretary questioned over support for P and ID. Uh, as the day goes by, we notice that there are bits and pieces coming together, you know, relating to this story. So we will see how all of this goes. So please get a copy of this. And then analysts rule out interest rate cuts as MPC meets. Uh, that's displayed. You can see that story on the first page of the news uh, this day. And then Buhari suspends Oyoita appoints Yemi Esan as acting HOS. You know, uh, at some point she said um, she decided to resign and then the Buhari did not accept the resignation and there was this back and forth. Well, finally, uh, he suspends her, the president has suspended Oyoita and now appoints someone to be acting. Uh, on that in that position. So London London magazine suggests she may have been paid. House of House set up committee to investigate 9.6 billion judgment debt. Knock for Ogun today for consulting for ESO while in public office. And we have a picture story here of uh, uh, Lai Mohammed and uh, Femi Adeshino. Please grab a copy of this day newspaper today and find out what all of this is about. And then. Um, there's something about PDP moves to reconcile aggrieved, aggrieved members, resolve to meet Wiki and others. That story is displayed on the first page, and again, it's continued on page six. Senate, why we are buying 5.5 billion uh, Naira cars for legislators. There's been all of the arguments about the cost, why it's so much, and then they have also tried to defend themselves. Well, grab a copy of any of these newspapers we've talked, we've mentioned this morning, and know for yourself the full details of uh, what this is about. And then the back page of this day, there's a column there, Olushegun, by, by columnist Olushegun Adeni, and it says the rising menace of oil thieves and the Port Harcourt killers. Do you hear about the serial killer? There's the serial killer apparently on the loose. moving, yes, on the loose in the Port Harcourt. And even as of yesterday, there was a demonstration by women who we were all decked in black and saying, oh, this must stop. And one of the rather interesting uh, uh, part of what they said yesterday was even s commercial sex workers have a right not to be killed in the gruesome manner because there were, you know, different women who were strangled. And then what that brought again to mind is the fact that they now said if hotels, if there are no CCTV hotels, uh, uh, CCTV cameras, cameras in mm. hotels, then that's a problem. And uh, people must document, uh, there must be some sort of well, documentation. What I find, what I find completely um, ab abhorrent is the fact that 
his face is very clear mm. on CCTV camera, and I don't believe that he has. Has he been arraigned? Uh, not, not to our knowledge. That is, that mm. is the most criminal part as far as I'm concerned, because in any other civilized society, at the point where everybody, I mean, it was all over social media yesterday, mm. this man should be brought to justice. I mean, he should be, because you can, it's, it's, the worst, uh, it's the worst feeling for anyone not to feel safe. Yes. Within there, and you have the right to feel safe in any environment that you live in. Mm. And I thought, for whatever reason, we don't take that as seriously as we should in Nigeria. Sadly. Very. Um, because, again, wh when I saw, you know, uh, the demands, of the, some of the demands of the women who protested yesterday saying, oh, you must have CCTV uh, cameras, I was worried because I said, why would any hotel really, why would there be a hotel without a CCTV camera, you know? Uh, it means that so many things will go under the ground and nobody would know. Well, to be honest, I don't think that the next day, hotels are quick, are quick to want to document a lot of the activities that go on in their hotels. Mm. I mean, just, I mean, just, uh, just as an aside, because we all know that a lot of CD things go on. In so, 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 in but at places. least it should be some sort of initial documentation. Yes. So say this is my name, and you know to have a proof yes. in case anything happens. Yes, I agree. Anyway, so yeah. this is a call for more uh, tight security measures in hotels, and of course, yeah. I would just like to talk about uh, the back page at, on the Nation. I, I think mm -hmm. I was I was actually going to mention it. It okay. was just a, a brief comment, just looking at the the article on power baits and the critic, mm -hmm. and. Just the, again, bring to bring home the idea that we are not necessarily allowed to uh, criticize Sad. or to yes, and that is one of the most foundational aspects of democracy mm. and you being in an agency and of, of in the individual. And well, here we have here a prime example of um, Sheo Onibinde, yeah. who is a brilliant uh, policy analyst who was through his uh, connections with multilaterals was brought in as a technical advisor mm. to the ministry and he would have done a fantastic job mm. and he's being i find that it, you know it's not i don't think it's necessarily the uh, fair to criticize or to penalize him for having an opinion even though it may not necessarily and i think that most oftentimes the one the one person that um the one person that um is the harshest critic of, of yours is the one that's going to affect the most change. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, that's just what I wanted to just say, just mm -hmm. to make us be aware that these things are happening and we need to basically be aware of them, mm -hmm. that's all. Thank you so very much, uh, Ify, for joining me uh, this morning and uh, making sense of the papers that we, ha we have this morning. And please do grab for yourself copies of all of these papers mentioned and know what the headlines are about in details. And this is where we'll be wrapping it up this morning on Off the Press. We'll do this again tomorrow, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa, on this program, Off the Press, where we analyze and make sense of the dailies. And have yourselves a good day. I am Amaka Okoye.